Okay. Welcome to Find Music, everybody. Uh, yes, you hear my, my brain rolling, remembering what episode this is, because I think it's episode 60. Because we left off in episode 59, which was my birthday episode, even though my birthday is six months away. <laughs> and uh, so that helps you remember this is episode 60. So we reached a pinnacle, another pinnacle, episode 60. And uh, how appropriate that will be, because we have another child of the 60s here, Jim Bobwe, who's going to throw some knowledge at you. Well, supposed knowledge. I don't know how much knowledge there's left in there, but we'll find out. Um, I'm going to share today uh, one of my virtual playlists. It's number two. We started, I think, with number seven last five. week. Five. We start with five. Okay. This one's number two. No sense in going in perfect, what you call alphabetic order. I think you... Alphabetical. Alphabetical order. I think you Which means that. you come back, start over. I like that. I like yeah. that. That's good. Um, yeah. And, and the, the basic theme uh, this week just has to do with um, places. Just places. Oh. So we have, um, let me do a screen share here. And you can see the list. And here it is right here. And it starts out with a, a band that I found by accident. Well, not really by accident. Um, I don't know if you know this. I do closed captioning for um, a company that's based in Australia. You know, you see the words on the screen. Some of the ones that you see with, um, like if you're at a sports bar or whatever, those are done by uh, stenographers or court reporters who type really fast. I don't go that fast. I just do the pre-recorded stuff. I don't do live captioning. Um, and the company that I used to work for, I used to get music sometimes that you have to caption the lyrics, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how I found the Chimps. Uh, I really like their song California. It's it's kind of kind of punk, heavy metal, uh, hip hop, different, you know, soulful. I I think they're from California. They're from Los Angeles, and uh, it's a really it's a really cool song. Um, I love living in the city by Fear. Any any group that's fronted by a, a guy who calls himself Lee Ving, that's you got to love that, you know. Um, Mark Allman, the city. It's a long, mellow. This is a two minute, the well, two minute and fifty eight second version I have listed here. But um, you can look around on YouTube or Spotify and find a much longer version of the song. It's really mellow. It's like reminiscent of 1971. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of typical of things that were coming out that year. Living for the City Stevie Wonder has some special memories for me. Um, as a sophomore at Cal Poly Pomona, I lived in the Orange Grove Apartments on Orange Grove Avenue, right next to the fire station, which is always a great place to live, right next to a fire station. Mm -hmm. The guy who lived upstairs um, from me, um, his name was Wendell. And Wendell played that song every morning for the entire school year. Um, so, and I, you know, it was one of those things where usually if somebody did that, I would end up hating the song, but it didn't happen with, with Living for the City by Stevie Wonder. Um, Wendell was an interesting guy. He worked at a, um, a factory in Pomona that made adhesive uh, liquids, uh, glue. He worked at a glue factory and uh, the, the, the substances were so toxic that um, they would work two hours and then they'd get two hours off oh. eight a day. And during those two hours off, they would play ping pong or basketball. Um, I don't know whatever happened to him. He was kind of, he asked me if I wanted to go work there. I said, I didn't think so. So um, that's a song that makes me think of Wendell. The Neighborhood Los Lobos, of course, is a lo local East LA band. Great. Sky Effing Line of Toronto is a, is a really hard rocking song by the Rugburns. Rugburns is a San Diego band. Uh, they play together sometimes on occasion. Okay. Uh, if you ever get a chance to see him, you got to see him. If you get a chance to see him at the Belly Up Tavern in Solana Beach, go there. It's a great place to see music. You can walk right up to the musicians. It's um, open seating. Uh, most of the time, they don't even have chairs on the floor. Um, and uh, Steve Poltz is the guy who fronts the Rugburns, and he wrote a lot of the songs for Jewel, who's also, you know, she hangs out here quite a bit. San Bernardino by Frank Zappa and the Mothers is on the One Size Fits All album. Um, she lives in a Mojave in a Winnebago. His name is Bobby. He looks like a potato. You got to love that. Um, Roxy Music, Street Life, Phil Manzanera, Brian Eno, Brian Ferry, 
uh, early, early Roxy music, fun stuff. Palestine, Texas uh, by T-Bone Burnett. If you ever, if you haven't heard of T-Bone Burnett, he, he was famous for um, his guitar playing. He used to be a guitar player for Bob Dylan and um, he's more likely to be producing records now, but his stuff is edgy. It's very progressive, but it's not synthesized, okay? Um, next on the list, I had to include Town Without Pity. We're talking about cities and a theme. Uh, it's a dramatic song by Gene Pitney with the strings and um, you just, it just gets your attention. Yeah, and you know what? It's really quite a pity. What a town. Wait, wait, I forget how that goes. It's really quite a, no, no, no. It, it isn't very pretty what a town without pity can do. You know, it's not, not very pretty. Um, Beat Farmers, local San Diego band. Um, this song, Riverside, on the Van Gogh album that came out in 1986 is a great one. They are no longer a band. The drummer, a very uh, charismatic performer, Country Dick Montana, uh, died during one of their concerts while they were playing in British Columbia. Uh, cool. I was lucky enough to get to see this band. They're just really excellent. And um, uh I think they have about four albums out. If you get a chance to see them on YouTube, make sure you see the live concert. Country Dick Montana would leave the stage at times and he would um, take his microphone down into the audience. He would have all of the little Cub Scouts and Girl Scouts gather around and he would tell stories mm. right in the middle of the concert, right before he would... Um, ask somebody for a beer, lay on his back, put the beer between his feet and drink the beer upside down, sort of drink it, you know. Uh, you could always expect to get wet with, um, with the bee farmers at their concert. Long Way Home, Steve White, another San Diego musician. He passed away several years ago. Uh, an amazing, amazing performer. Uh, if you get a chance to go to its, um, what's the video, music video, uh, a website that starts with a V. It's not, is it? I don't know what it is. I can't remember what it is. Um, but Long Way Home, uh, great song. Uh, a local friend of mine here named Kurt, uh, Clint Burkett made a movie about the life of Steve White. He was also a painter. And uh, one man band, one take on a lot of these songs. A uh, very talented guy. Uh, he was diagnosed with cancer of the larynx. And an interesting thing happened uh, mm -hmm. after his surgery. He was unable to speak. And hmm. I went to see him in the hospital right down the street here after his surgery. And, you know, I was not expecting to see what I saw. And when I got there, this is the day after his surgery. He had taken his guitar and he was playing music for the other patients at the hospital. I mean, that's the kind of guy he was. He... Um, wow. He had a, a, a saying, he, he said uh, he wanted to be a painter, but then he lost his vision to glaucoma. Um, and then he wanted to be a singer and he lost his voice to cancer. He just said that he was glad he didn't want to be a gigolo. So that was <laughs> Steve White. That's Steve White. Um, wow. You can see this virtual playlist and several others that I posted and haven't talked about yet here on Find Music. Uh, the website address is right there on the bottom of the playlist. Um, if you go see the playlist and you like it, listen to some of the music and drop me a note, say hello, and I'll write back to you as soon as I can. Very cool. Thanks, Don. Wow. I'm, I'm with a few questions here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll try to spell them out in the order that they came to me. Okay. One of my very first questions upon seeing this list was, uh, how do you determine how many songs are on your list? Uh, it's just a random thing. I don't have a, sp yeah. I started out um, trying to put 12, just, you know, mm -hmm. I thought it was a nice round number. Um, but some of the subsequent lists after this, there's more than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, next week, next week, um, I created a list of songs that still knocked me out. I mean, things that uh unforgettable stuff that i just love that i'd like to share with people 
And some of them, you know, I'm sure that you've heard some of them and some of them you haven't. So. And you found the place to do that right here at Fine Music. Right here oh. at, at Fine <laughs> Music, that's right. No, but uh, six songs each side, it makes me think of an LP. Okay. That's what yeah, it makes yeah. me think of. I'm looking at the times, I go, mm, yeah, that would fit on a side of an LP. Speaking of I sides of an LP, here's a great trivia question. How many grooves are there on the average LP? One. Nope, two, both sides, okay. Oh, two. One okay. on each side. Yeah, yeah. I had the right idea, though. Yeah, you had the right idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah some would say, oh, hundreds. Yeah. yeah, no, it's 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 a funny question. I just love the question. Yeah, that is a good question. That's a good piece of trivia there. Which brings me to the next question. Okay. Uh, well, actually, it's, I'll make a comment first. I mean, I was very impressed by your ability to talk about these acts. You, you know, you're well-researched. You obviously love them and have favorites. Yep. And you've met some of them. So that's, yep. you know... Oh, wonderful. And, and uh, the opportunity to meet a lot of these local bands just came. Yeah, well, that's something above and beyond the norm, really. Yeah. You're above and beyond the norm, okay? I declare you thank above you. and beyond thank the you. norm. Thank you. Thank you. I just, I love taking pictures of bands playing their music. And if anybody hears this and wants me to come and take pictures of your band, I love doing that. And I have a, um, special a little amount of pride in the fact that i always get the drummer in the picture you know it might require yeah, they neglect the drummers stuff. too much in videos and stuff i agree you know they, they're always in the back and they're usually yeah, they get neglected too. right right they do they do unless it's keith moon of course so. that's right that's right so well uh so the other thing is that uh i think this is something anybody would do you know when you see a list and you start to do your own associations with it, like, oh, you know, sounds like, right? Right. And I like to feel that I've heard California before somehow. As a chip? There's a ghost in my body saying I've heard it. Uh, I'm going to investigate that. Yeah, do that. And uh, Fear, it. legendary punk band. Yep, yep. Mark Almond set off several alarms, but I'm sure they're false alarms, because Mark Almond, who was he? He was... Um... He was not a member of Grand Funk, He's from right? the Bay Area. Pardon? No. Wasn't there some guy in Grand Funk that had a name like that? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and then there's Soft Cell, but that's with a C. Mark with a C. Mark right. Almond was the lead singer of Soft Cell. So I'm, I had to correct guy. myself. I go, 1971, that's impossible. Yeah, different guy. Yeah. This is really a mellow song. You know, a really City. mellow, long, mellow song. And uh, I think I heard it for the first time, like, a lot of the songs I heard during those years was on um, KPPC in Pasadena when they were broadcasting from the basement of a church. When they were truly independent. They were truly independent. Not owned. Yep. Yeah. No, hey, no. Uh, I feel like I've heard Town Without Pity. You said it was in a movie, right? Uh, I think the movie is called Town Without Pity. Yeah. So maybe I've seen that movie. I don't know. I'm just, I've seen too many movies. It's a, but... 50s, it's a 50s movie, I think. I'm just thinking strings and... Yeah, 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 yeah. And envision really a 61, 61 sound. Really yeah. dramatic, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you're living in a town of pity. Let's see. And then, then you get to stuff I actually know, like, you know, the well-known Stevie Wonder. Yeah, I love that. Right? That, that's that's uh, shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah. Right? That's, 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 uh, the thing I want to point out, in case anybody hasn't figured that out, is that this is the long version. Yes. So... Yeah. There you got your regular song, and then the second half is more like a, a scenario. Right, right. Yeah. It's, it's, but it's still uh, got the music going in the background, but there's a, a situation spoken going word. on. It's spoken word music. Yeah. You know. So I'm just trying to show off what little knowledge I have. That's a good, it's, yeah. I love that song. So and when I heard, when I, yeah. yeah. When I bought that, you know, yeah, it was a revelation that, oh, it goes on. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. So it's not just That's what you hear the on the radio. That's the way the long version is of the city by Mark Allman. It goes. It's probably yeah. close to eight eight minutes in the. Yeah, wow. Okay. The full version. Want to investigate? And then Los Lobos. I had the great fortune of seeing them three times live, mainly because they were filled with other acts. So I would go see like Santana and Los Lobos would open for them, things like that. I saw, I saw Los Lobos. Um, at the Laguna Seca Raceway many years ago with the Grateful Dead and David Lindley. And then I saw the I saw Los Lobos again at the Doheny Blues Festival, 
where I was a bartender in the celebrity section. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, and then they they returned the favor. They would have some great opening acts when they headlined. So. Yeah, they're a great band. I mean, and yeah, they, they have a huge range of of music that they play. Yeah, they're not just one thing. They, no, they no, can no. do at least three things. Right, <laughs> they can really rock. Yep. They can really play music in their uh, what in their, in their from their background. Right. Right, and like the music they grew up with. They and it's, so it's got that '40s and '50s flavor to it. Yep. That's just remarkable. And then they synthesized it. Right. Uh, yeah, their eco comes to mind. Their contemporary songs are are really topical that address they address social issues. You know, um, people that work hard and can't get ahead. I mean, it's it's a, some some are just gorgeous. Some great, like, yep. like Saint Behind the Glass. That's, yep, love that song. Okay, and then uh, I was born a little too late for Frank Zappa. I think. Oh, okay. I heard he was the bee's knees. Uh, well, amongst the hip maybe in the initially... late sixties. What initially attracted to Frank Zappa music was the fact that it just annoyed the heck out of my parents, you know, and I think okay. that as a, as a teenager, that's, that's, I think that's part of a teenager's job description, annoy parents. Yeah, but I had a misfortune in that area. You did? Yeah, because I was playing uh, Pink Floyd. Oh. <laughs> Wish you were here. Okay. Got that long song, Shine On Your Crazy Diamond. I love that song. I'm playing it in my bedroom. Got the door open. And my mother walks over and goes, Oh, who's that? That's really nice. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, the last thing I wanted to hear. Oh, uh, that's funny. Yeah. But it, uh, there's, there's a funny side too, because, you know, I was, I'm a parent and mm -hmm. like my daughter was a teenager. She would have uh, music and, and she told me about this one song. And she was surprised I knew the song. How do you know this song? I said, oh, that because that's a remake. It's a remake. She couldn't believe it was a remake. And uh, if I, that's the one, that, the line, uh, the line is more famous than the song title. Take a look at my girlfriend. She's the only one I got. I don't know that song. What is it? That's by Supertramp. Oh, OK. And the song is called Breakfast in America. Oh, from that's the, the title, title of the album, album Breakfast in America. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's just a short, under three minute song. Uh -huh. and, uh, if it mentions Breakfast in America, it doesn't do it very memorably. But the thing everybody oh. remembers is the opening line that gets repeated Take a look at my girlfriend. She's the only <laughs> one I got. Not much of a girlfriend, never seemed to get a lot. <laughs> and uh, uh, so she thought, my daughter thought, oh, this is original lyrics, right? Uh, her, her band. Okay. Uh, and then I had to. Play her. I played her the original, mm -hmm. and she says, "Oh, that's really good. Uh, I got to play it for my friends so they can hear this slow version." <laughs> oh, that was a knife. Time of the Century right is my favorite Super Tramp album. I think. Yeah, well, it's, it should be everybody's. Yeah. It's the Stone top ten classic of the decade, pretty yep. much. Right, it was their pinnacle. Yep. But I'm I'm a fan for them. Uh, anyway, I don't want this to go on too long. But what you said about these other artists, just utterly fascinating. Thanks. Your encyclopedia for them. Well, I, I just and hope that, you know, um, creates enough curiosity so they can go check them out. Exactly. That's what you're doing. It's working. Yep. All right. So that was a great episode 60. Thanks, So you got to take out that screen share. Oof. Okay. Got it. That's the deal. Take it out. Take it out. Take it easy. So people can see you. See? Before we say goodbye. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Thank you.